Betty Sakulowski is one of the newest members of the International Club in Australia. Welcome to the Club, Boo. We're so pleased to have you on board. Thanks, Sarah. Appreciate it. Happy to be on board. Yeah, well, we're in lockdown here, not too much going on. So we wanted to share a little bit of your wisdom going from being a player to a coach. Talk about where you are now. What are you doing with your coaching? Um, currently, uh, just starting up at Burundara Tennis Centre. Um, was with Tennis Australia for five years. Really enjoyed my time there. Um, moving on to something a little, uh, I guess, different, uh, hopefully impacting a little bit more of the private market. Much of the work that we're doing with the BTT is about that player to post-tennis transition. Your mm -hmm. career ended pretty abruptly, right? You had an injury. What was that like? Yeah. And how was the transition for you from player to the rest of your life beyond being a professional tennis player? Yeah, I mean, it was abrupt in the way it ended, but I was suffering from some, um, some pretty average knee injuries um, there for a while. Uh, yeah, look, I, I guess it was a sort of a natural progression for me I think I always felt that I was going to end up in the coaching industry um, I felt like I had a lot to to give I think after being a tennis player and 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 you know viewing myself as a tennis player and feeling like I could impact players for the better knowing what I what I could learn from my journey I could probably pass on a little bit to the next you know generation of kids coming through so yeah, once, once I moved into coaching it would just seem like the most natural progression for me after after leaving the game at a younger age and, and I guess surrounding myself around some inspiring coaches. A lot of people out there don't know that you were the lead singer of a band and you have a phenomenal voice. Was that <laughs> always part of what you wanted to do beyond tennis or something you kind of fell into alongside coaching? <laughs> I wouldn't say phenomenal voice, but um, yeah, look, I think I just kept myself busy. It was a hobby of mine. You know, being on a tour, it's pretty lonely unless you're travelling with a group of your Aussie friends and, and some of the people that you might make uh, meet, meet along the way. So singing was a way of keeping me occupied, keeping my mind off being lonely. Um, and, yeah, it allowed me to probably spend more of my time away being happy. Was it a difficult transition for you? Did you experience some loneliness? Was there support in place for you to move from that injury, sudden end, onto life beyond the tour? <laughs> Yeah, it was. It was. It was hard. It was really difficult. Uh, I think initially I was living a life that I hadn't lived in a very long time. Being back home in Melbourne, um, trying to figure out who I am as a as a person uh, after just you know you know what it's like traveling, picking up your luggage, going to another country. Um, you don't really have a chance to reflect on who you are as a person. I think, and yeah, I guess we're they're pretty fortunate these days. I think athletes to have beyond the tour and have some resources around them. But I think at the time it was really difficult to find that. I didn't feel like I um, probably had that at the time. And I think the people that I did rely on were the, you know, my coach, he was, he was my coach at the time and a friend, you know, my family, maybe one or two friends that I had was still in connection with back here. Um, so I didn't have a huge network of people because I didn't spend a lot of time in Melbourne. That's certainly one of the aims of the BTT is to try to build that community and keep that connection for players while they go beyond the tour and, they make that transition into a regular life and something where they can feel a sense of being grounded. There will be a lot of players that do go on to going into the coaching market. What advice do you have for retiring players on how to get started in the coaching business? I think the one piece of advice is, uh, you know, allow yourself to develop as a coach if that's what you're wanting to do. Um, I think spending time with really quality coaches and people are really important. So almost like an apprenticeship of some sort, spend your time with people that you feel can develop you as a person and as a coach. Because I think if you, once you get off on the right foot, you can continue to, I think you'll enjoy your coaching journey a lot more. You'll feel inspired to do a great job. And I think, um, you know, yes, yeah, spending, spending some time with some great minds out there is the way I would go about it. Thanks, Boo. You are a legend. Enjoy the rest of lockdown in Melbourne. And I can't wait to see you sometime live, sometime soon. Thanks, Tony. Thanks for having me.